Peace family, welcome to Black Star TV 2.0. It's your boy Black Star, and today we're gonna get into this black and brown coalition and show I want to show how um and of course this is not for all um uh Hispanics or Spanish people. Of course it doesn't go for all of them, but I'm gonna say, especially in my experience, I know that the nice majority of them don't really see eye to eye with black people, and we use that black and black and brown um thing a lot and uh especially politically it hasn't been working for us and they're not on the same page as us and i'm gonna even say in the workplace um i noticed that uh i noticed that as well but even i'm gonna even get into a, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get into the um the spanish and, and the hispanics but i also want to say i also seen this with um the uh africans because actually when i was um first into the whole Pan-African thing. I'm not saying that I'm not, uh, strictly against Pan-Africanism because I think it, it is a good concept, but it really hasn't been working for us, right? But um, I remember being around some Africans and they definitely, I'm gonna say 90% of the Africans that I ever encountered um, over here aren't on the same page and they definitely not down with the whole Pan-Africanism thing. So, I mean, uh, so yeah, that's that. But um, yeah. So we're gonna get into this black and brown, and uh, I want to show y'all some videos from American Cholo. And I want to say that man, it's a it's a lot of Mexicans who actually express the same sentiment. A lot of them don't say it, but um, or just come out outright and say it. I actually got a friend that's half uh, Puerto Rican, and um, he actually was telling me how they actually have a name that they be calling him because he's not full blooded Puerto Rican. So it's like a name that they give him because he's like half black and he can speak Spanish. So, you know, it's definitely some division um, that goes on. Um, but let's get into it, man. Let me share my screen and we're gonna show you some of these um, American children. Matter of fact, the first one I'm gonna show you is actually on my phone. So let me just do this real quick. I'm gonna show you on my phone and I'm gonna play. This is Tariq Nasheed. And um, this was from his his uh thing. So let me play this real quick. This is American Cholo. You frozen? You frozen? All right. We here. We still here. All right. No jumper, coolest podcast in the world. We're with Adam. How are you doing? Co-hosting. Co-hosting. And we're with the most unfiltered educated uh white man and <laughs> white supremacist oh sorry white. about that we still here can you guys hear me all right did y'all did y'all hear the clip all right did y'all hear the clip let me play it again because it might have froze all right let me play it again let me play it again sorry let me play it again because it might have froze hold on all right bear with me all right let me play that clip again Hold on one second. Let me play that one more time. Hold on. They talk of it. We fuck the niggas. We fuck the niggas. We fuck the niggas. Keep taking shots at me like I'm this nigga. Like, fool, look who you hanging with, God. What did you just say? I said, I did. Oh, jeez. You just said that word. Yeah, I did, son. I did. I said, you keep hanging with these guys. You keep, always keep taking. Yeah, so this guy can't help himself. All right. So that was that. Matter of fact, you know what's so funny? When I had skipped that, it had actually took me to the um no jumper Let's podcast. Call it. <laughs> cool award given. See, and you notice even in the beginning, I actually uh um had skipped back because I hit the volume button. I thought that was the volume button, but it actually skipped videos. But uh Adam uh 22 had Tariq Nashi on his show, and he also had this black dude. Who was actually hosting but he said he was co-hosting so he actually played the background of um of that because Tariq Nashi is is known excuse me is known as the race baiter right so being as though Tariq Nashi is known as the race baiter or the person who really speaks on political and racial issues he wanted to bring a black person up there to really ask him like the questions that he he can't ask or is going to make him look crazy, because it is crazy, right? 
because you you was trying to set up things talking about Dr. Umar. The other dude was talking about trying to get you to bait you into Dr. Umar. So that is like a tactic that they try to use. They try to put a black person in front to try to um, ease the um, the racism out. So it's like, yo, you ask some of these questions while I sit in the background. I'm going to ask them some questions, but they ain't going to be the questions that you want to ask. That's going to be controversial. You feel me? Especially dealing with the race thing. So that was American Cholo, and that's what he said. So I'm going to go. Now I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to go on the Twitter, and I'm going to also show when he was on. I actually want to show the No Jumper one first, right? So this is him on No Jumper. Um, this is him on No Jumper. Now watch how they got who they got on there. Free ring. Excuse me. Watch who they got on there interviewing these people because it's not Adam 22 now to post whatever he wants for some reason. Um, and I'm going to tell you something, bro. Like, what if Flacco, you lost your past too, my dog. I don't know who hired you here. I don't know who told you that it's okay for you to do that shit, but um, we abide by the laws of the street, my dog. So all that shit you touring is not going to be tolerated. This, this ain't Chicago. This ain't New York. You are not academics. You are not going to do, you're not going to do to our streets what academics did to other communities because we're smarter than that, my dog. You feel me? And these bonds that we have, are real you know what i'm saying and ain't no individual gonna manipulate that and that's why we're here we're here with respect diligence we're here with class to just show and demonstrate like how serious it can get dog because we are not by any stretch of imagination trying to take it there fool. yeah it's not it's not it's not our agenda our agenda is to um for one like preach intelligence in the streets dog you know what i'm saying is to is to preach purpose into these streets like we're not it's very easy for me to jump on social media and start ganging shit up for in shit. a few hours i can have more than a few hundred homies here ready for it all you feel what i'm saying but we're not doing that why because we're not trying to lock our that homies up that was, that we're not trying the, the big black guy we got the big black guy syndrome my boy. so all i know is i got my platform coming out use a fool use a trump and use a ghetto coon with that amount when you guys were slaves, you guys would run to Latin countries, brother. But really, you're just a ghetto coon. Brother. You're just a ghetto coon. A lot of the ghetto coons do that. They talk a good. We fuck the niggers. We fuck the niggers. We fuck the niggers. EBG is what he's got. See what I'm saying? And the funny part about it is, um, hold on one second. Brother, every time they get into a fight, what up, nigga? What nigga? Like, what, what, what are these guys, man? And the worst part of it is that every single one of those SA gangs in those areas have black enemies, brother. And a lot of those guys, they put NK. Nigga killer, there's some bullshit here. That's what they put. They put NK, nigga killer. And to me, I'm looking at somebody putting that on a wall. Wait a minute, homie. Nigga killer? You got the same dress. You got the same talk. Shit, you guys even rap like Crips or Bloods. It's, it's coming to the point where... If it goes this trend, it's, man, I'll be going to still clean the South another 20 years or your homies because it's going to be their career for sure, I mean, because that's where it's going. It, it's it's a shame because at the same time that you're going down that route, you're losing your culture, man. It's hard for me to sit there and listen to somebody say how Mexicano they are, how gangster they are, how Sudanian they are, but they act completely black, homie. They act completely black, and what... I know what's going to happen is eventually, as the generations go a little bit farther, a little bit farther, the morals and values, even though it's a gang structure, even though it's a, let's say, criminal entity, there's still a certain morals and values that comes with acting like a Chicano gangster, a Cholo gangster, whatever you want to call it, brother. And the more you guys continue to act in that manner, the more your morals and values are going to go for them. the ghetto coon and sheep. I've always thought coon was an Uncle Tom. Yeah. All right? So that's yes. off the bat. The ghetto part, and I've had this conversation with many brothers, and I heard what you said. You said that you act like you did. See? Now, this is the part where the finesse comes in. This is what I was talking about, how they use, see? Now, just like we had right here, where Adam-22 was on the side, now when it's time to address him about saying something, um, slurs about black people, you want to bring a black person up there along with now another Spanish person so y'all can try to finesse this nigga who's some coon. He's really a coon, 
right? And the person who's going to just allow you to just make up any excuse of why you was using that uh, derogatory statement. Down with the hood, yeah. but you live in the whitest part of California. He, he's doing, he's doing like, he's steering the pot and he's talking all this shit about black power and fuck Mexicans and fuck whites. It's all about the black. Okay, he never said fuck Mexicans ever. He never even said fuck white people. He said fuck white supremacy. Not fuck white people, fuck white supremacy, which is a big difference. Black people, but you're living in the white area, homeboy, because you don't, you don't got no repercussions for that kind of shit. It's in saying shit, like that, steering shit up that don't know the game, don't know the flavor, don't know what's behind this. So that's why I put the phrase ghetto, you want to be great as fuck, cool, you want Uncle Tom, homie. That's all it was, but when you get the phrase and you wake up in the morning, I'm looking at this shit. I've been working at this for four, and I made a video, and it's specifically there, it says... That's my whole point. See, these dudes don't be knowing any history, and this is why um, people like this get to say whatever the hell they're saying because they don't be making no sense. Have you ever seen anybody trying to mock the Jews? Nah, I don't fuck with the Jews, bro. They do not even. I ain't even want to watch that one. Hold on. It's, it's another one I actually wanted to um, let y'all see. One second, family. One second. Just bear with me. This is another one. Black Lives Matter protest. This 
Isso, é grupo Fantasma. Isso é grupo Fantasma. Isso é grupo Fantasma. Isso é no, that's not it. It's one where he talking about um it was talking about uh let me see. says nigger to black people. Okay. I've done it in their face. You done it no so so it's okay to do it then you're saying. I so, already said it, yeah. Okay, so what kind of guy says nigger to black people? Okay. I've done it in their face. You done it no so so it's okay to do it then you're saying. I didn't say that. To all your black subscribers, it's okay to say nigger because you say it in their face. I didn't say that. You just said that. I did it in their face. I never said because they're black, they're niggers. It's okay. I never said that. A few minutes later, America Cholo man slipped due to him being very upset with Sony and, and so upset the N word into it. There you go. If you were to leave me the fuck alone, I could care less. But you always keep taking shots at me like I'm this nigga. Like, fool, look who you hanging with, carnal. What did you just say? I That's it. That's it. Oh, jeez. You just said that word. Yeah, I did, sonny. I did. I said, you keep hanging with these guys and you keep taking shots at me. That's what I said. You got me. You got me. Any, anything else, sonny? I got what I wanted. I, I, I. See what I'm saying? This is your black <laughs> this is your black and brown coalition right here. I was hoping I can get to that other video where they was talking about. I think this one is wrong. White G can do that because the African American community has just do a, whatever they want no, and no, nobody's no, gonna wait, give wait, them a problem. Wait, 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 wait. Stop being so racist so quick. I'm not being racist. The African American community has got the gear of the media and of the appalled and of even white people, even young Mexican-American kids, young, I say that, and all Latino kids, all behind them. They've got that gear already with them. So when they get offended, everybody else is getting offended. And they start fucking acting like they're victims of this. I'm not talking about the majority. I'm talking about a few individuals, but they have a lot of influence in the media. That's when somebody was telling on the comments on, on, when we did the one on, on some Hollywood stuff, and they were saying, well, why do you care about, about music and Hollywood? This that's the influence. That's the influence that makes other exactly. people. Exactly. That that's how our children see. That's how our children yeah. go by. But that's what, what they listen to. But why, do I think YG meant to do it respectfully? Absolutely not. Do I think the homies that were at the video thought it was respectful? No, they were just trying to get on there, trying to get on. Business. Yeah, it, it's it's business. money. But what, what, is it disrespectful? Yeah, it's disrespectful. Dude. That would be like, imagine this. No, what's disrespectful is that you have and I'm gonna give because I, I even like this dude. Um, Axel Leon, you got Fat Joe, Big Pun. They all use the word nigga. They all use the word nigga in their rhymes, dog. So can we say that's offensive? You feel me? Y'all want to play this old game, but um, I wanted to show you actually uh, uh Tariq Nasheed, John. Hold on. He had um. He had made this post. Um, he had made a post. And they was pulling up. That's another thing. They protesting uh, Power 106 for even having them dudes on there. And uh, what else am I calling my phone? One second. But let me show you this. Let me, let me just get to this real quick. Hold on. Let me... Uh, So, congressional black office. Let's 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 see this real quick. Now watch this. Now we got the congressional black caucus, and I've did this before on here, right? I've did this before. Let's go to about. Um. See. <sighs> Since its establishment in 1971, the Congressional Black Caucus has been committed to using the full constitutional power, statutory authority, and the financial resources of the federal government to ensure 
that African Americans and other marginalized communities in the United States have the opportunity to achieve the American dream. Dream, excuse me. To ensure that African Americans and other marginalized communities. Now let's do this. Go back. Let's go back one more time. Um, Congressional Hispanic Caucus. This is the main one I wanted. I ain't even go go into all the other ones like Asians and all that other stuff. Now about um, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus was founded in December 1976 as a legislative. Uh, service organization the United States House of Representatives. Today, the CHC is organized as a congressional members organization governed by the rules of the uh, blah, blah, blah. rules of the uh, United <laughs> U.S. House of Representatives. I want to get this going. So, the CHC addresses national and international issues and crafts policies that impact the Hispanic community. Right. The function of the caucus is to serve as a forum for the Hispanic members of the Congress to coalesce around a collective legislative agenda. The caucus is dedicated to voicing and advancing through the legislative process issues affecting Hispanics in the United States, Puerto Rico, in the Commonwealth of the Northern Marina Islands. Nothing about other marginalized communities. They don't mess with black people. Ain't one black face on this joint right here at all. Not one black face. Not one black face. Oh, right there. I'm sorry. That nigga way in the back over there. Boop. See what I'm saying? Let's get to it. The all pictures, man. This is the Congressional Black Caucus. The Congressional, they 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 fuck with everybody. That's what I'm saying. These, that's that that was the the thing I wanted to try to get y'all to see. See how they got all these uh different different uh ethnicities all up in this John. Um. That's what I wanted y'all to see. Um, so these are all your coons. And um, I wanted y'all to see uh, Tariq Nasheed's post because he was actually saying, um, name one out of Congressional Black Caucus, NAACP, Black Panthers organization. You name one Hispanic, um, Hispanic uh, 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 organization that helps Black people people name one and if you can name them put them in the comments if you can name them please put them in the comments we don't have y'all don't have one organization y'all don't have one organization that helps us but the congressional black caucus they're about literally set in all marginalized groups so that means they helping everybody they're not just helping black people they helping everybody but that's what that's what we get for running around with this whole black and brown coalition and um trying to do things for all other groups while black people sit here and get finessed all that shit has to end that's why we're not doing the whole black and brown coalition especially when it comes to politics you feel me and of course we all know that every race has people who aren't uh, against us, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to say for the majority, for the majority, Asians don't mess with us. Hispanics don't mess with us. Um, of course, white people don't be messing with us. Um, you just name them, Indians, Arabs, you name the culture Africans, you name the culture foundational black, they do not mess with foundational black Americans as a whole. As a whole, not all of them, not all people. You know, we got Spanish people, white people, all that. We got all those people, few that really mess with us. But for the most part, man, they don't rock with us, dog. And I've seen that in the workplace. 
and I, we see it politically. Only people that's not going to see it politically are people that are politically uneducated and don't understand what's going on when they speak on marginalized communities and call us minorities and colored people and, um, 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 you know, poor people and all this other stuff. All those, all those little words are used to undermine black people and add other people to the mix. Because again, um, minorities, a white woman is a minority, a gay white man is a minority. Um, everybody's a minority, minority, bro. Everybody fits under the minority category. So again, so, so this is what, um, the reason for that is so that they can practice benign neglect and use that benign neglect to undermine black people politically so that nothing gets done so they don't have to do anything for us specifically and they can say oh, okay a hundred million dollars went to um uh, minorities right and you're gonna say okay that benefited black people like no then we come to find out that only two percent of that money came to actual black people you get what i'm saying but when you say minority, the first people you're thinking about is black people. The first people that you actually thinking about is black people. So like, we got to get off that whole brown and black, uh, black and brown coalition, especially when it comes to uplifting each other in um in the political spaces. You feel what I'm saying? Do what you do outside of all that. But when it comes to political, which which moves the needle for um groups of people. Dog, it's no need to be in. It's no need to be in. Uh, in in um coalition with that. It's no need to be with those people and ride for those people when they don't ride for us politically. You feel me? When it comes time to get tangibles and things like that, they don't say anything. They don't. They don't advocate for us. They don't do any of that. So, it's time to cut those ties politically. I'm not saying you got to cut your Spanish friends off if you got Spanish friends or white friends or whatever, whatever, whatever. But I'm talking about politically for black people to progress in this society. We have to go for Dolo like every other group does. And even when speaking about Africans, like um, like they say, like Africans, they'll they'll get a uh, Ph.D. and be like, oh, I'm I'm from Nigeria. I'm, I'm a Nigerian. uh Nigerian American said the third, but as soon as it something bad happens, it's like, yo, that person's black. Like, ho. Oh. Now you mix and now we one big black nigga. Like, no, 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 no. He's Nigerian American too. When he when he went ran down there and went upside old girl head or old boy head, or he he robbed the store. Yeah, he's Nigerian American, he's foreign, he's an immigrant. Like, we gonna start. Um, spreading that out because then it comes down to making us look like we doing all this stuff. Do you get what I'm saying? And statistically, even like when you um go into the statistics of crime, like if a Nigerian American does something out here, they're going to say, yo, black crime is up such and such and such and such. But it really ain't uh, foundational black Americans who's actually doing all this. If you start separating um, immigrant um, Im black immigrants from us yo i guarantee you the statistics of crime is going to go down for black people for us foundational black americans if you put us as a separate group and that like you got everybody else you feel what i'm saying because you got white people then you got um black people you got hispanics you got asians um then you got uh uh, uh native americans you feel what i'm saying you separate it like that now if you separate um black immigrants in their own group the black uh thing is gonna go down and you won't be able to keep saying oh well y'all doing this per capita y'all doing that per capita and it's making it seem like we committing a whole bunch of crimes again if you're new here please hit the subscribe button please hit the like button so we can get this um so we can get this out to everybody and that gets the algorithm popping so that more people can see the video please hit the share button but definitely, definitely subscribe to my channel so we can get this content out here. Again, I push a lot of um, uh, black content, which is another reason, you know, the channel gets suppressed. Because anybody who pushing black content, channel gets suppressed. 
So the way to get this information out there, because they don't want people to hear this type of information. They don't want hear people to hear this type of talk when we speaking on reparations. And that was another thing they tried to say, that they need reparations before us. Now, we're not going with that. We're not going with that at all, dog. We were here before all of y'all. We were the ones that were slaves. The Native Americans slaved us. That's what the 1866 treaty is about because they slaved us and we want our shit. Matter of fact, let me let me look that up for y'all real quick. Let me get to that. Let me get to that. We're going to get to that. Because, see, that's something they don't talk about neither. 1866 treaty. Let me see if I can just go to this PDF. Let me see if I can go PDF. There it is. Let's see if I can get this up here. There we go. So look now. Look. So let me see if I can. Uh... Boom! There we go. All Cherokees and free person who were formerly slaves to any Cherokee. And all free Negroes not having been such slaves who reside in Cherokee Nation prior to June 1st, 1861, who may within two years be elected to not reside in the northeast of the Arkansas River and south of the Grand River shall have the right to settle and occupy the Canadian district southwest of the Arkansas River and also all the tract of the country lying northwest of the Grand River and bound on the east on the southeast by Grand River and west by the Creek Reservation to the northeast corner thereof from thence west on the north line of the Creek Reservation to the 96th degree and west longitude um, and thence north on said line and longitude so far that a line due east to the Grand River will include a quantity of land equal to 160 acres for each person who may so elect to reside in the territory above the described in this article. Huh? Now, let's go back to the top. All the Cherokees and free persons who were formerly slave to any Cherokee and all free Negroes that not having been such slaves who reside in the Cherokee Nation prior to June 1st, 1861. Then again, this is the treaty with the Cherokees. I got to get ready to go. That was my alarm. But there you go. This is the 1866 treaty. And shows you on Article 4 that we were slave to the Cherokee. All Cherokees and free persons who were formerly slaves to any Cherokee and free Negroes not having been such slaves who reside in the Cherokee Nation because we were some of the natives. That's what the Maroon, um, the Maroon movie that uh, Tariq Nasheed is making American Maroon. Um, as a matter of fact, I got uh, that is that is the um, what's some that's on my thing, right? Let's get here. Let's get here. How do I get to my page, man? There we go. See this maroon flag right here? Yeah, that's the maroons. So when we talking about that, that's these these free Negroes who haven't been such slaves. Because the Maroons were Indians, black Indians who weren't slaves and they were actually killing. That's why y'all need to watch the American Maroon movie that Tariq Nasheed is making. And that is the American Maroon flag right on my thing. And that's the FBA flag right there. Yes. So again, please subscribe to the channel. Please, um, oh shit. I actually. <laughs> didn't even share my screen. I'm sorry about that. But this is it right here. That's what I was reading from the um from the treaty. I'm sorry I didn't share my screen at that time. 
but that that's the treaty right you can go to the 1866 indian treaty pdf that's exactly what i was reading article four as you can see it now and you couldn't see it before but i'm not going to read the whole thing but all the cherokees and free persons who were formerly slaves to any cherokee and shall uh and all free negroes not having been such slaves that's what we was talking about about this american maroon here's the flag if you didn't see it before that's the American Maroon flag right there, and that's the FBA flag right there. Um, that's why I said to her, she was doing the thing. But again, if you are um, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. You know we need more subscribers. I need some more views. Uh, thank you, people, for being here with me today. Thank you for watching the video. I appreciate all the support from the people who did subscribe. Thank you so much. I love y'all. And stay blessed. Be safe out there. And good night.